But uh, as we've been talking about, there are problems at some places. Coventry Lake has been closed because of a blue-green algae bloom. The state also says swimming is no longer permitted at Kettletown State Park in Southbury. So there's two parts of the state right now where you can't swim because of blue-green algae. Time to learn a little bit more about it. Do we need to worry about it in other areas? Right now, happy to have Dr. Senji Lin, a professor of marine sciences at UConn, joining us to give us the lowdown. Dr. Lin, good morning to you. How are you today? Good morning. Yeah, glad, I'm doing well. Thank you. Glad to have you here. Okay, first things first, why don't we talk about what kind of danger blue-green algae blooms present? Yes, yeah, so uh, this kind of algal blooms have a, a high biomass that can uh, hurt the ecosystem. And but more, more seriously, they produce toxins that can be uh, poisoning to uh, animals like dogs. If they drink out of the lakes uh, that is impacted by these uh, blooms, uh, they will have serious problems, they even die. And when human gets uh, some of these toxins in, will have symptoms too. That uh, so it's really a real threat to uh, to the public health. Okay, that's good to know. Now, obviously, we rely on the state to let us know which areas there could be a problem. But if people are trying to keep an eye out for themselves, is there any way to distinguish blue green algae from other algae? I mean, first of all, is it blue and green? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, not necessarily always green, but we tend to see green uh, in more cases than, uh, than not. Uh, although they sometimes can be uh, brownish or, or reddish uh, color, but most of them are blue, are green, really. Yeah. So one way to look out about uh, whether the water is good for you to get in or to use uh, is uh, to see if the color is clear. But the water should be clear. Uh, if it's green, then you know something's going on in there. It may not be safe. Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, is there any difference in the growing conditions? In other words, are any other sort of swimming areas more prone to getting blue-green algae that we could, uh, as lay people, be uh, more aware of? Yeah, so uh, we know that the blooms uh, happened, especially in recent years, when the climate change, basically warming, uh, occurs, it becomes more frequent. Uh, but that, that's not something we can control uh, right now. I mean, uh, we only can uh, prevent uh, climate change of, you know, on, on, you know, by using long-term measures. But for now, uh, what we need to work out, uh, look out is that, uh, you know, see if where there are, uh, you know, greater populations, more human activities, especially uh, fertilizing your lungs uh, or a lot of uh, septic uh, you know, release discharges. Those are the places that are more prone to this kind of uh, blooms because the nutrients, especially uh, nitrate, ammonium, or phosphate, when they uh, get into the water, those stimulate uh, the growth of uh, cyanobacteria or the blue-green algae. That makes sense, doesn't it? If it's going to help uh, grow your lawn, it can help grow other uh, organisms that you don't necessarily want in those swimming spots. Dr. Lin, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and uh, teach us a little bit about blue-green algae. We do appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you.